Hi students, this is AJ sir. Let's study 10th standard ICAC math chapter 15A similarity basic applications. Similarity basic applications. Two triangles can be called similar if their corresponding angles are equal. That is angle A is equal to angle P, angle B is equal to angle Q and angle C is equal to angle R. So if angle C is 40 degrees, angle R will also be 40 degrees. So if the three angles are equal, then they are similar triangles. Note that they are not congruent triangles because the sizes are different. AB is clearly greater than PQ. However, the ratio of AB to PQ will be equal to the ratio of BC to QR and that will be equal to AC upon PR. So when two triangles are similar, their sides are in proportion like this. If the triangles were congruent, then we would have simply said that AB is equal to PQ, BC is equal to QR and so on. But we can't claim that here. All we can say is that the ratios of the sides are equal. For example, let's say AB was 10 centimeters. And let's say PQ was 7 centimeters. Now if I say that BC is 20 centimeters, how much will be QR? Any guesses? Well, it will be 14. That's right. Because AB upon PQ, the ratio is 10 upon 7. So BC upon QR should also be 10 upon 7. So if you cross multiply, we do get QR as 14. Then only will the ratio match. So that is the property of similar triangles. Angles are equal and sides are in proportion and we symbolically write it like this ABC is similar to PQR now the way we write the names is very important because the letters should be corresponding notice that angle A is equal to angle P so if A is the first letter here P should be the first letter here and B is corresponding to Q C is corresponding to R. We could not write it as triangle QRP because then the correspondence isn't there. Similarly, if you talk about sides, AB, PQ. So AB upon PQ is equal to BC upon QR. So BC upon QR, AC upon PR. So again, the correspondence is maintained. Let's take another example. Imagine these two triangles are similar. That's a similarity sign, a wave. But here I'm saying that angle A is equal to angle F. Angle C is equal to angle D. And angle B is equal to angle E. So how should I write the name of the triangle? I would say triangle ABC is similar to triangle. What should I write now? A is corresponding to F. B is corresponding to E. And C is corresponding to D. So I have to write triangle ABC is similar to triangle FED. I can't write it as EFD or anything like that because the angles should match. And now, if the triangles are similar, the sides will also be in proportion. That is, the ratios will be same. So, let's write that. AB upon FE. That's right, AB upon FE. Next, BC upon ED. Okay, BC upon ED. And finally, AC upon FD. AC upon FD. So, 
writing the name correctly is very important so that we get the ratios correctly that means the ratio of AB upon EF will be equal to BC upon ED so don't mismatch the corresponding size next conditions for similarity just like we have tests for congruency we have tests for similarity as well if there are two triangles given how can you prove that they are similar or not a practical way would be if you zoom this triangle if you enlarge it then you will be able to fit it exactly on this one or if you minimize it it will fit exactly on this border to border but in a mathematical method we have to use either SAS AA or SSS test so there are only three tests for similarity in congruency if you remember there were five tests but in similarity we have only three tests or postulates first let's understand the SAS test here if I say that AB upon DE is equal to BC upon EF this that means let's say this is uh, 10 and this is 3 next what if this is 30 and this is 9 so is the ratio same 10 upon 3 and this is also 10 upon 3 ratio is same so I get at least two sides ratios equal and I need one more thing what if this angle between the two sides and this angle between the two sides are equal that's it then it's proved that the two triangles are similar by SAS test or SAS postulate side angle side side angle side notice that the sides are not equal but the sides are in proportion the ratio is same and once the two triangles are similar it is obvious that angle A will be equal to angle D angle C will be equal to angle F because that's the property of similar triangles and we call it corresponding sides or corresponding angles of similar triangles also can you tell me now what would be the ratio of AC upon DF well it would be 10 upon 3 because the ratios of the sides are always equal in similar triangles another postulate is the AA test so I have two triangles let's say angle A is equal to angle D and angle B is equal to angle E that's enough to prove them similar because if two angles are equal then the third angle will definitely be equal automatically if this is 60 this is 60 if this is 50 and this is 50 then obviously this will become 70 and so will this and if all the angles are correspondingly equal then they are similar so this is called the AA test even if you have just two angles which are equal to two angles the two triangles are similar and what follows after that what follows is that AB upon DE will be equal to BC upon EF will be equal to AC upon DF that is the sides will be in proportion the ratios will be equal and the third test is the SSS test so what if AB upon PQ is given as equal to BC upon QR which is equal to AC upon PR that means the ratios are given as equal then too we can conclude safely that the two triangles are similar and what follows is definitely angle A will be equal to angle P angle B will be equal to angle Q and angle C will be equal to angle R because the two triangles have been proven to be similar but how can you be sure that angle A is equal to angle P and not some other angle 
Well, it's all about how you write the name, right? Uh, the sides were such that it's AB upon PQ. So clearly A corresponds with P. So angle A will be equal to angle P. Angle B will be equal to angle Q. And angle C will be equal to angle R. That's why the order in which we write the name matters while writing similarity because it should be corresponding. So quiz time. Look at these two triangles. Don't look at anything else. Look at these two triangles. If I say triangle ABC is similar to triangle, tell me the correct name. Only look at these two triangles and tell me the correct name. How should I name it so that the corresponding angles are equal? I repeat, triangle ABC is similar to triangle FDE. That's right. FDE would be the correct way because A, as you can see, is equal to F. B is equal to D. And C is equal to E. So FDE. Now, one more question. If I ask you to tell me the sides ratios in proportion what is your answer pause and think about it ready okay the answer is AB upon FD is equal to BC upon DE is equal to AC upon FE did you get it right well if this is what you had written, then as I said, AB is equal to FD, BC is equal to DE, and AC is equal to FE. So that's how you know which side to take in the ratio. Let's start with exercise 15A. Question 1. In geometry, you have to draw a diagram in each and every sum, whether it is given in the question or not. You can draw it with pen, freehand, don't waste your time with pencil and ruler. But it should be neat and big. And write the proper statements and reasons exactly as I'm going to teach you. You should write the reasons wherever required and wherever possible. There should be a logical flow in your sums. At every step you have to ask how, why this step. That's the way we do geometry and get full marks in it. If required, leave lines to make it neat. So the diagram is given. That's good. That makes things easy. It's mentioned that AC is parallel to DB. The moment they say this, some things come to my mind. For example, this angle A will be equal to this angle B alternate angles because it's a Z. Even angle C will be equal to angle D. Again, a Z, a reverse Z. So that's alternate angles. Another thing I can notice here is that this angle APC is equal to angle DPB, vertically opposite angles. So whenever you name angles, you should use three letter naming. You can't say angle P is equal to angle P. Which angle P are you talking about? We need to be specific. So you should know exactly how to name an angle. For example, how to name this in three letters? Tell me. Quickly, did you say C-A-P? That's right. Even P-A-C is correct. Or even C-A-B, angle C-A-B is fine. Or angle B-A-C is also fine. Yeah, since there is no angle A, there is no confusion possible in this sum, in this case, if you just say angle A, I'll accept it. Otherwise, a three-letter naming is compulsory for angles. So, I have to prove these two triangles similar. Roman number one. Oh, that's so easy. We have the AA test, right? So, if I can prove two sets of angles equal, it's done. So, I'm going to take this equal to this uh, vertically opposite. And I'm going to take this equal to this uh, alternate angles. But also mention AC parallel to BD. Third angle, not required. Two angles are enough. Any two angles would have been enough. So, we draw the diagram freehand and we write in triangle this and triangle this. One pair of angles equal. 
Another pair equal, whenever write alternate angles, please mention AC parallel to DB, which are the parallel lines, it has to be mentioned. So the two triangles are similar by AA test. However, look at the naming. The naming should be appropriate. If you said APC triangle, then please write BPD and not something else like DPB or something. Check. A is equal to B, right? So if A is the first letter here, B should be the first letter here. P is the second letter. P should be the second letter. And C is equal to D. So if C is the third letter, then here D should be the third letter in the naming. That is important. You know why? Because in Roman number 2, I'll have to write the names of the sides which are in proportion. And I'll get it wrong if the namings are wrong. So in Roman number 2, I will say AP upon BP is equal to PC upon PD is equal to AC upon BD. Check. That's what I've written. Reason? CPST or rather CSST is also fine. That is corresponding sides of similar triangles or corresponding parts of similar triangles. I prefer CPST. If you want, want to write the full thing, corresponding parts of similar triangles, you can do that. Depends on what your school teacher wants you to do. If he or she had a bad day at home, then he or she might tell you to write the full thing. Then just obey her. In the question, if you read it, they have given the values of BP, PD, AC and BD. And they've asked us to find AP and PC. So now that's so easy. For example, if you take AP, so just this ratio and this ratio cross multiply. If you cross multiply it, you get AP as 4.8 centimeters. Similarly, if I cross multiply these two ratios, then 4 goes up, cut, cut, but I get 6 centimeters as PC. Done. Next, the third sum. Mark it as IMP. P is a point on side BC of a parallelogram. Now let me tell you one very crucial point for similarity or for geometry in general. Reading the question and getting the diagram right is absolutely vital. This is the number one most challenging thing about geometry. That you are not able to figure out the correct diagram. Then how will you solve ahead? If you can draw the correct diagram, half the battle is won. Now I'm going to show you the diagram and you're going to copy it. But if you really want to train yourself, after reading every question, try to draw the diagram on your own and then check if it's right or not. If it's wrong, it's fine. At least you learn from it. You know, we learn faster when we make mistakes compared to when we have ready-made answers in front of us. This is a scientific fact. Even when you do solved examples for practice, don't look at the diagram at all, unless it, it is already a part of the question. But don't look at the solution. When you practice it, read the question, hide the diagram, try to draw it on your own. It will take five seconds extra to figure it out. Fine, invest it. Because unless you train yourself in drawing the correct diagram, you will not succeed at geometry or in similarity. You would practice this entire chapter for an upcoming exam. But during exams, you will be stuck. You know it. You know what I'm saying is the truth. You know that during exams, most of the times you don't get a sum because you don't know the diagram. Because whatever practice you did was with the diagram ready-made in front of you. That is wrong. That is a shortcut way of studying it. It will be a flop. It will be a disaster. You invest time in drawing the diagram on your own. You make mistakes because our brain captures things faster when we make mistakes. So look at this diagram and try to draw it on your own. A rough diagram. Then cancel it later. It's fine. Should I show you the diagram now? Okay, here it is. Was it right? Uh, you may have drawn a mirror image. That's okay. But let's start solving this. It's a parallelogram. That means opposite sides are parallel and equal. Remember that. And we have to prove that DP ratio PL is equal to DC ratio BL. 
now definitely that can be proved as a cpst and for that i will have to prove two triangles similar but which two triangles should i prove similar look again dp and pl and dc and bl belong to which two triangles well this big one and the small one so angle dpc is equal to lpb so this angle is equal to this angle vertically opposite angle fair enough and i'm going to take this angle is equal to this angle you could have taken this equal to this as well these are alternate angles and we have to mention uh, which lines are parallel so you got two things that's it so the two triangles are similar by a a test and if they are similar then the sides will be in ratio so dp upon pl will be equal to dc upon bl and by the way it will be equal to pc upon pb also but that is not asked so, so far so good and after every step keep looking at the diagram don't just copy the steps keep looking at the diagram find the logic understand the reasoning behind each step if you have some phobia of geometry believe me if you follow the instruction which i'm saying which is time consuming i agree but soon you will start enjoying geometry and you'll be good at it it'll take a lot of time and patience on your side but so here's what what i proved and here's your ratio please write in ratio form not the fraction form because in question they've asked for the ratio form second part is a bit tricky dl upon dp is equal to al upon dc let me check this now dl upon dp is equal to al upon dc well first of all dl does not belong to any particular triangle oh it does belong to this big triangle dl upon dp here is dp that belongs to the small triangle but what's the relationship between this big triangle and the small one there is none and also what's the relationship between al and dc well i do know that dc is equal to ab because opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal so there are a couple of ways to solve this an easy way is something called basic proportionality theorem it's a part of the second exercise actually the b exercise but let me introduce this theorem to you although the proving part is in there the statement says that if there's a triangle and we draw a parallel line to the base that that means ad upon db is equal to ae upon ec that's it the ratios of the sides uh, the parts of the sides are equal that is called the basic proportionality theorem so if you wish to use that out here then the sum will become easy it will be something like um lp upon pd is equal to lb upon ba and then you'll have to do componendo and invertendo and all that but i'm not going to use that method although you can try it in the future after the b exercise is over and after you've mastered bpt basic proportionality theorem i'm going to use this ratio that we had so first i'm going to do invertendo that is reciprocal of that then i'm going to do componendo because pl plus dp if you notice look at the diagram is giving me dl which is what i want in the question so if i do componendo i am getting dl upon dp also here instead of dc i will replace it with ab look at the diagram again are dc and ab equal yes they are because they are opposite sides of a parallelogram and the reason why i did that because bl plus ab what is bl plus ab well it's al so this becomes al and hence we've proved the ratios equal so this is something you have to look at the diagram and figure out next question is question 5 again imp sum mark it as imp in triangle abc angle abc is equal to twice angle acb 
and the bisector of angle ABC meets the opposite side at point P. Try to draw the diagram on your own before I show it. Pause the video and do it. And we have to prove these things. And whenever you see such a thing, it's clear that this will come as CPST, corresponding parts of similar triangles. And for that, I will have to prove two triangles similar, first of all. Even for Roman number 2, it seems like a CPST and then a cross multiplication. So, first of all, get the diagram right. Is it like this? Yeah. Now, they said that angle ABC is twice angle ACB. So, if I assume this to be X, angle ABC will be 2X. Also, they said that BP is an angle bisector. That means this will be X and this will be X. That's great because now PBC triangle is an isosceles triangle. That means PB is equal to PC. Isosceles triangle. Great. So we'll, we'll start with that. Let this angle be X. So this is equal to X as well as it is given. Now we are going to prove two triangles similar. Uh, triangle ABP and triangle ACB. But how do we know which two triangles to consider? Well, for that you have to look at the question. When they said CB upon BA and CP upon PA. So you have to figure out to which triangles do these sides belong to? CB upon BA and CP upon PA. So that means yes, asking us to prove this upon this is equal to this upon this. So they seem to belong to triangle ABP and BPC, but we can't really prove them similar very easily. On the other hand, we can prove the big triangle and the small triangle similar easily. And the fact that BP is equal to PC will prove useful. So let's try that. So in triangle ABP and triangle ACB, what things do you have? It's always very easy to separate the two triangles, draw them separately and then visualize them to see how are they similar. So I drew triangle ABP and triangle ABC separately. Now look, notice how angle ABP is X, of course, this one, X. And even angle ACB is X, this one. So that's one thing. I need one more thing. Both the triangles have a common angle A. So angle A is equal to angle A. That's it. So I got AA test. The two triangles are similar and write the names correctly. A should correspond with A, B should correspond with C and so obviously P will correspond with B out here. So the two triangles are similar by AA test and now we write CPST. You could write all three ratios. There's no harm in that because you may not know beforehand which ratios are useful and which are not. So you can just write AB upon AC is equal to BP upon CB is equal to AP upon AB and then decide which of the ratios are, are useful. So the reason is CPST, don't forget the reasons. And now after reaching this, again look at the question, keep looking at the question, what do they need and what do we have? They want BC upon AB. We don't have that yet. We have AB but we don't have BC yet out here. Oh, we have it here. BC we have. Great. And they want CP upon PA. CP, do we have CP? No. And we have PA? Yes, we have PA. Great. So out of the four things which were there in the question 5.1, you got three things. So that's the reason why we proved these two triangles similar. Because the sides we required are a part of these two triangles but we don't want the BP we want CP instead now that's okay as I said BP is equal to CP it's an isosceles triangle right because the angles are equal 
So even this can be replaced as CP and we got all four things. And of course, we'll have to do an alternando. That is uh, this and this will switch places. And ta-da, we got what was asked. That is this is equal to this. Now, the Roman number two, they've asked us to prove that AB into BC is equal to BP into CA. Which two triangles will you take here? Can you guess? Check AB, BC, BP, CA belong to which two triangles? Well, the same two triangles as Roman number one. So we've already proved them as AA, uh, as similar by AA test and we have already had the CPST. So just cross multiply and you get what is asked. Done. So now you're beginning to enjoy, isn't it? Go take a break for two minutes and come back with a vengeance. Let's solve question eight, IMP again. How are these sums useful? Well, it's at least keeping you busy so that you don't waste your time on social media and other bullshit activities which are of no use in life. How is this useful in life? Well, it's improving your IQ. It's, it's a riddle by strengthening your logic and your focus. You will be able to succeed in every challenging intellectual task in the future. You may not need geometry in your career, but you will need logic and focus. So do it. It's given that AD is equal to AE. Okay, that becomes isosceles. And it's given that AD squared is equal to BD into EC. So if I, if I just rearrange it, it's like AD upon BD is equal to EC upon AD. Sounds like sides, ratio of sides are given. Great. And we have to prove triangle ABD, similar to triangle CAE. Hmm, these two triangles. We've got three types of tests, right? I'm guessing SAS test will be useful here. Let's see. Good news is diagram is given. That makes our work so much easier now. Since the sides are equal, I'm going to assume this as X and this as X isosceles triangle. If these two angles are equal, then definitely these two angles will also be equal. Because if this is X, this is 180 minus X, linear pair. And if this is x, then this is 180 minus x, linear pair. So remember, we have to prove these two triangles similar. So I got one thing already. I got angle equal to angle. Yes. If only I could get just one more angle, pair of angles, done. It would be AA test. But we don't have another angle. What we do have are sides in ratio. So first of all, write the steps till here. Prove the angles equal and start in triangle A, B, D and C, A, E. Fortunately, the naming, the correct naming was already given in the question, which makes it easy for us. Angle D is equal to angle E. Um, write the full name, angle A, D, B rather. A, D, B is equal to angle A, E, C because if I just write angle D, then it's quite confusing which angle D are you talking about. Always write three letters, angles. Now, they said AD square is equal to BD into EC. That's what is given in the question. So that's AD into AD. If I send one AD down and if I send EC down, let's see what happens. So I'm getting, I'm getting AD upon D, uh, EC is equal to BD upon AD. So that's what I get, the ratios. That's good. Check, are they belonging to the two triangles to be proved similar? Uh, almost. The only issue is with this AD. Well, don't worry. This AE can, AD can be replaced with AE. Because AD is equal to AE. Notice this. AD, yes, here AD. EC, got it. Next, BD, done, BD. But then I should get AE. I didn't get AE. I got AD. And that's the hint that I have to replace it, this AD with 
AE. So now side upon side is equal to side upon side. So two pairs of sides are in ratio. The angle between them, the, the angle should be between them, between the two sides, this side and this side and this side and this side is also equal. So by SAS test, the two triangles are similar. See, I had predicted that it will be SAS test. Next, the tenth sum. Again, diagram is not given, so draw it on your own. Read the whole question. A couple of perpendiculars are given, values are given. So it's not a proving sum, it's a solving sum, that's good. But we'll have to prove CPST before we prove anything. This is the diagram. It's given that angle B is equal to angle C. It's not given actually. It's proved because it's an isosceles triangle property. They've mentioned. In the question. And these are perpendiculars. So this is a question mark here. P, B is what we have to find out. One, two, three values are given. Fourth value is missing. So this should be very clear to us that we have to prove this triangle similar to this triangle. So what do we have in these two triangles? We've got 90-90. So one angle equal. And we've got angle B equal to angle C. So second angle. So by AA test, we will prove them similar. And then we'll do CPST. And then we'll do cross multiplication. So even before solving, you should visualize the entire sum in your diagram. Then only you should start solving. Don't solve just straight away. So in triangle this and this, Q is equal to R 90 degrees. It's understood its angle P, Q, B, obviously. But if you want to write the three letters, do it. That's better. And angle B is equal to angle C. But why? Reasons. Isosceles triangle property in triangle B, A, C. Give the name of the triangle in which you're applying any property. Give complete information. Otherwise, we'll lose half mark unnecessarily. The two triangles are similar by AA test. Get the CPST. Write all three ratios because you're not yet an expert in it. You don't know which ones are useful and which ones are not. Uh, out of this, three values were given. BP can be found out by cross multiplication, which is 20 centimeters. Next, cancel question 11. True and false won't come in exam, although you can go through it for knowledge. 12 sum is very easy, so cancel it. Let's do the 13th sum. Read the question and draw the diagram. Ready? Here it is. So, the entire angle A, that is angle B, A, C, is equal to angle A, D, C, is what is given. And the moment you see something like this, prove this is equal to this, you know that you'll have to prove two triangles similar and do CPST, then do cross multiplication to get it. But which two triangles should we prove similar? So look at this, C, A, C, A, C, B, C, D. These things belong to which two triangles? Clearly, it will be triangle A, D, C and triangle B, A, C. Again, the naming should be matching. A is equal to D. So make sure that they are in the same order in the two triangles. Angle C is the common angle for both. So angle C should be corresponding. And the remaining letter is A and B. So obviously angle A, only the small one, will be equal to angle B, but that is not significant for this sum. So ignore that. So we have one angle equal to one angle given. Second angle is common. So by AA test, the two triangles are similar. So by CPST, we get the ratio. So make sure you understand which ratios to focus on. The third ratio, you can ignore it. And if you cross multiply, you get the answer. Now the 15 sum. Again, altitudes are given that are perpendiculars and prove that the triangles are similar and Roman number two would be all obviously CPST and cross multiplication. So the diagram is this one. The two altitudes are given, 90 and 90. Fortunately, in Roman number one, they've already mentioned which two triangles to focus on, so we don't have to rack our brains about it. P, Q, T, and Q, 
R S clearly 90-90 and common angle Q simple I got two angles please write three letter namings and the similarity reason forget the reason you lose half mark A A test Roman number two write the CPST and cross multiply and you get the answer now the 18th question in triangle PQR angle Q is 90 degrees and QM is perpendicular to PR Hmm. PR is the hypotenuse in this case. Draw the diagram. Come on. Is it looking like this? It should. So, Roman number one. I have to prove PQ squared is equal to PM into PR. So, PQ, PQ, PM and PR belong to which two triangles? It has to be this small triangle and the big one. So, that's what I'm going to focus on because in the big triangle I've got 90 degrees and in the small triangle also I've got 90 degrees that's one thing and what's the second thing angle P is common so by AA test I can prove the two triangles similar so 90-90 common angle so triangle PQM is similar to PRQ namings matter so that you get the ratios right CPST don't forget to write it corresponding parts of similar triangles and if you cross multiply you get the value of pq squared great roman number two don't have to solve the whole thing similarly just write similarly the this small triangle and the big triangle will also be similar so by a test same thing so you will get qr squared is equal to pr into mr now roman number three they have asked for an addition of Roman number 1 and Roman number 2. So PQ squared plus QR squared. So add the RHS also. That's Roman number 1 plus 2. Notice here PR is common. So take it out common. What is left inside is PM into PM plus MR. It's a plus sign actually. And PM plus MR is PR. Look at the diagram. And PR into PR is PR squared. So We've just proved the Pythagoras theorem by similarity. Because we've proved in a right angle triangle, PQ square plus QR square is equal to PR square. That is a hypotenuse square. So that's one beauty of similarity. Helps us to prove Pythagoras theorem and many other theorems in math, in geometry. In 19 sum, no need to do Roman number 2 and Roman number 3, just do Roman number 1 for homework. Now 21st sum. In a quadrilateral, the diagonals intersect at point E and the ratios are equal. That is given already. And we have to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. Please cancel trapezium if it's mis a misprint in your textbook as well. It should be a parallelogram, not a trapezium. So the diagram is like this. To prove a quadrilateral as a parallelogram, all we need to do is prove the opposite sides parallel. That is DC parallel to AB and DA parallel to CB. Alternatively, you can prove DC parallel to AB and DC equal to AB. Even that would be enough to prove it as a parallelogram. Now, how do we prove two sides parallel? Well, there are a few ways. One is called the midpoint theorem, which you must have studied in ninth standard in a triangle. If uh, there are two midpoints, then the line joining that is parallel to the base. But such a thing is irrelevant for this sum. Another way is, if only I can prove, say, this angle equal to this angle. It's forming a Z. They are called alternate angles. And if alternate angles are equal, then the lines are parallel. This is the converse of uh, alternate angles property we use usually we say that if the lines are parallel then the alternate angles are equal here we will do the opposite if we can prove the alternate angles are equal then by alternate angles test the lines are parallel we also have something called the corresponding angles test or co-interior angles test that is allied angles tests but mostly we will use only alternate angles test so focus only on this right now which two triangles will we focus on? Let's take triangle AEB and CED. It is already given 
that AE upon BE is equal to EC upon ED. Check it out. Read the question again. It's mentioned out there. Great. AE upon BE is equal to EC upon ED. But these are not ratios of two different triangles. Like AE and BE belong to the same triangle. So we'll have to do an alternando and switch places between them. So write that step as well. In the next step, write AE upon EC is equal to BE upon ED. And that gives us a hint that indeed we have to focus on these two triangles, although we could have used these two as well. Now, apart from the two pairs of sides in ratio, I can also see that the vertically opposite angles are present VOA. You can write VOA, it's allowed. Vertically opposite angles. And hence proved that by SAS test, side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. The two triangles are similar. And whenever two triangles are similar, the corresponding angles are equal. This is equal to this. Even this will be equal to this, although that's not required. So please write here C, P, S, T, corresponding parts of similar triangles. After SAS test, we have to mention this. And the moment we proved these two angles equal, now we can say confidently that DC is parallel to AD by alternate angles test. And similarly, we will say similarly, AD is also parallel to BC. No need to prove these two triangles similar and prove these two angles equal and all that. No. Similarly, they are parallel and if the opposite sides are proved parallel, we can say the quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram by definition. Now the 22nd sum mark it as IMP. In this triangle, AD is perpendicular and it's given AD square is equal to BD into DC. We have to prove angle BAC is 90 degrees. So this is the diagram. AD is perpendicular and we have to prove this as 90. We have to prove it as 90. Since they have given this, uh, let's just rearrange the terms. So this AD goes down and DC goes down. So it's AD upon DC. AD upon DC is equal to BD upon AD. Great. Also, I'm going to assume this has X and this has Y. For reasons I'll let you know later. So here's my strategy. I'm going to prove these two triangles similar. Why these two triangles? Why not the bigger triangle? Because if you look at these four, let, four sides here. AD, DC, BD and again AD. They all belong to the smaller triangles. So if, if I can prove these two triangles similar and this is 90, fine. Then by CPST, if this is X, this will also be, become equal to X because you know once the triangles are similar, the corresponding angles have to be equal. If this is Y, then this will also become Y. And that's it then. Now if you look at the bigger triangle, the angle sum property says that X plus Y plus X plus Y totally is 180. That means x plus y will be equal to 90, hence proved. So in triangle this and this, I'm getting uh, at least one pair of sides in ratio. And I'm getting angle D equal to angle D 90 degrees. So please write the full name, angle ADB. So like right here, ADB is equal to angle ADC. It's compulsory to avoid confusion. 90 degrees given. So the two triangles are similar by SAS test. And then I assume this is equal to X and these are equal to Y reason. Tell me the reason, quick. C, P, S, T, corresponding parts of similar triangles. Now in triangle ABC, angle sum properties 180, substitute the values, I'm getting X plus Y is 90, hence angle BAC is indeed 90 degrees. Next, 24th sum. Again, IMP. Diagram is given. That's a relief. We have to prove that PQ squared, that is PQ into PQ, is equal to PD into PA. Okay, that's a little strange because everything is on the left-hand side. PQ into PQ is equal to PD upon PA. Even if I rearrange it, if PQ goes down and PA goes down, it's 
one wonders which two triangles to take to prove similar. Well, try it out on your own. See if you can figure it out. But I'm going to show you a different method, which is a shorter method, which doesn't use similarity per se, but we'll use something called BPT, Basic Proportionality Theorem. Have you ever heard about it? Yeah. See here. First of all, they've given dr parallel to qb and they've also given qr parallel to ab. They've given two pairs of parallel sides. Let's exploit this. First of all, focus on triangle pqb. Here, dr is parallel to qb. Okay, only focus on this triangle, okay? Forget about everything else. pd upon dq will be equal to pr upon rb. That's BPT, right? In the triangle, if there is a line parallel to the base, then it cuts the other two sides in equal ratio. That is PD upon DQ is equal to PR upon RB. That's what I write here, BPT. That's Roman number one. Now, look at the bigger picture, the bigger triangle, PAB, triangle PAB. Here, QR is parallel to AB. So now I will say, that PQ upon QA is equal to PR upon RB. Why? BPT. In this triangle, if QR is parallel to the base, it divides the sides in the same ratio. If I get Roman number 2. Notice how in both the cases, the RHS is same. Both are equal to PR upon RB. That's the strategy I'm going to use. So from Roman number 1 and 2, I'm getting PD upon DQ is equal to PQ upon QA. Everything on LHS, which is what I wanted. Here we go. But still, this is not what they have asked. Look at which of these terms are useful. Uh, PQ, yes, it's there in the question. Is PD there in the question? Yes, it is there. Is QA there in the question? Yes, it is there. And then there is this DQ now. Actually, QA is not there. PAA is there. Even DQ is not there. I need a PQ. So I've got two things which are there in the question and I've got two more things which are not there in the question. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of DQ, what do I need? I need PQ. I have a DQ, I need something bigger called PQ, okay. I have a QA, but I need something bigger called PA. So this should be a hint that here we have to use Componendo. By Componendo, we can convert smaller things into bigger things by addition. But before that, I will do an Invertendo. So that's reciprocal. And then I'll do a Componendo. So it's DQ upon PD upon PD is equal to QA plus PQ upon PQ. Now what is DQ upon PD? It's PQ, which is what I wanted. Good. And what's QA plus PQ? That's PA, which is what I wanted. And PD and PQ, I already had. No need to change that. And then cross multiply and get this. But why did I do invertendo before doing the componendo? Well, if you look at this ratio, imagine if I would have done Componendo directly after this step. Let's see what happens. So it will become PD plus DQ upon DQ is equal to PQ plus QA upon QA. Fine. What is PD plus DQ? PD plus DQ is PQ. Good. That is what I want. But the denominator would have stayed as DQ. But I don't want DQ. I want to get rid of DQ. The numerators were good enough for us. Our problem was with the denominators. We had to convert the small denominators into bigger ones. And componendo always happens in the numerator part. The denominator remains as it is. So that's why first I flipped it, invertendo. So now my denominators won't change, which is what I want. I don't want to change these. 
and the numerators can now be changed by a componendo operation and we get what is wanted and the denominator remains as it is so that's why we did it the way it is and these things you can master only by a lot of practice the more sums you come across of this type the more intuitively you will be able to figure it out now take the next sum for example 25th sum a very important sum a big sum the diagram itself is very confusing so try to draw it on your own through the midpoint m of side c d of a parallelogram a b c d so first draw a b c d parallelogram then through the midpoint m so midpoint m okay a bm is drawn intersecting the diagonal ac in l and ad is produced in e when i say when they say produced means extended till e so the diagram is ta da did you get it right if you did then you are a genius in geometry proud of you then pat your back if not well read the question again and find out where you went wrong now let's understand the question first what is given a b c d is a parallelogram great the good thing about this exercise is the given is already given so we don't have to write the given sometimes the given is not given so we have to write the given so here m is the midpoint of dc m is the midpoint okay so dm is equal to mc great and they said that the bn is extended till point e ad is extended till point e and this cuts the diagonal ac at point l and they have asked us to prove that el is double of lb el is double of lb so let's go reverse in our thinking if i want to prove el double of lb that means basically i have to prove that el upon lb is 2 upon 1 so that will come by cpst if only i can prove that ea upon bc is 2 upon 1 then it follows that el upon lb will also be 2 upon 1 because it seems like they will be a part of a cpst ratio so perhaps I'll have to prove triangle ELA, this big triangle, similar to triangle BLC. But how? I've got a vertically opposite angle ready. Good. But I need one more thing. Okay, I've got I've got alternate angles. Great. I've got this alternate angles. I could have said this as well, you know. This is also equal to this alternate. It's a Z and they are parallel, right? They were parallelogram. So this is parallel to this. So these two triangles are indeed similar by A test. That means EA upon BC will be equal to EL upon LB. But still, how do I prove that EA upon BC is 2 ratio 1? How do I prove EA is double of BC? I know that DA is equal to BC. You know, opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So, E, D, A is equal to B, C. If only I can prove that E, D is equal to D, A. That means this whole thing will become double of B, C. But how do I prove E, D equal to D, A? So, for that, now we shall focus on triangle B, E, M. And triangle BMC. So we will start the sum with this. In triangle EDM and triangle BCM, I got vertically opposite angles. I got DM equal to MC, side equal to side. And I've even got this angle EDM equal to angle BCM. 
alternate angles i could have even said this angle equal to this even that would have worked so i am getting a s a a s a test of congruency i just proved the two triangles congruent not similar they are congruent angle equal to angle side equal to side and angle equal to angle vertically opposite so the two triangles are congruent that means ed is equal to cb or bc the two sides are equal that was my whole point by cpct corresponding parts of congruent triangles not similar triangles so again the two triangles are congruent by asa test write all the reasons exactly the way it's written and after each step keep looking at the diagram don't just copy it keep looking at the diagram understand the logic of each step so ed is equal to cb cpct and why did i prove this equal to this because if ed is equal to bc and we know that bc is equal to ad opposite sides of a parallelogram that means now ed is equal to da so this whole thing ea becomes double of bc which is what we wanted because if ea is double of bc it follows that el will also be double of lb so after proving them cp ct but cb is equal to da so that means ed is equal to ad and ea is double of bc that's roman number 1 next we will prove triangle ela and triangle clb similar and i i already told you how i've got vertically opposite angle i've got alternate angles so by aa test of similarity i will prove the two triangles similar and i'll get a cpst once the two triangles are similar by cpst i know that ea upon cb will be equal to el upon lb but we've already proved that ea upon cb is 2 ratio 1 so obviously el upon lb will also be 2 ratio 1 and that's what we had to prove we had to prove that el is double of bl now the 28th sum that's easy the diagram is already given medians are given medians means that e is a midpoint of ab and d is a midpoint of ac that's why it's called a median prove the two triangles similar okay the triangles are also given so no confusion there so i've got this triangle and this triangle how do i prove them similar i've got one thing angles are equal can you tell me what is the other thing don't look at the solution just look at it and predict how will i get the second thing or the third thing to prove these two things similar say it did you say angle equal to angle but how it's not given that ed is parallel to bc so don't assume things don't jump go step by step you know if e is the midpoint of ab and d is the midpoint of ac then by midpoint theorem ad will be parallel to bc in fact ed will be parallel to bc and ed will be half of bc that's called the midpoint theorem so write that midpoint theorem from 9th standard this will be useful because if this is parallel to this it follows that this angle will be equal to this angle it forms a z alternate angles and so the two triangles are similar by aa test and also that means that the sides are in ratio cpst but we already know that ed upon bc is 1 upon 2 you know midpoint theorem that means the other ratios are also equal to 1 upon 2 so bg is twice of gd as asked in the question hi students if you found this video useful press the like button Also to enroll for my online lectures or online test series email me or message me on Instagram check the description for more information